So back in the day, the internet had home pages. Now, maybe you still use a home page or maybe you have a specific place where you always default to, but it feels like home pages aren't really a thing anymore. You just kind of go where you need to go. But I still like to have a page that's set up that is default, a place that provides some information and that is curated by me because I don't want to actually like use Yahoo if that's still a thing or MSN or AOL. I'm, I'm showing my age here probably, but you know, those used to be the home pages of the web. And these days I don't know what that actually is. If there's even one that the, the youngins default to, but I wanted a home page that could be default for me. So I've been on the search for this type of thing for a little while, and I've tried many different options. There's something called Flame. There's one called Homar. There's a couple different ones. I believe there's one actually called Homepage. I've tried quite a few of them, and the one I've settled on is an application called Glance. Now, this is a self-hosted application, so you do have to be somewhat familiar with the with self-hosting, but it's not all that hard to get started, and we're going to take a look at Glance today. It's really, really good. There's so much you can do with it, so many different ways you can kind of make it look your own and make it have different types of information on it so that it just suits your needs as your personal homepage, dashboard, whatever you want to call it. So today we're going to take a look at Glance, but before we jump in, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It really helped the channel. So let's take a look at what Glance actually looks like. And this is actually the dashboard that I've been using right now. So this is Glance. And as you can see, it is made up of modules basically of certain information so i have a youtube widget here i have an rss feed which i haven't actually done all that much with i have a reddit feed here i have a bookmark section i have a place for hacker news a place so i can list all of my docker containers so it can kind of show me what's up and what's down so I have all that stuff. I have a little widget here that shows me the current status and statistics of my home server, the uptime and the CPU usage and all that stuff. I have a calendar, I have the weather, and I have the stock market here. Then if I scroll down, I have a couple of releases and that's pretty much all I have to it. Now, you can make this as complicated as you want or as simple as you want. And it's all done through a configuration file. So you do kind of have to be okay with configuring this in a text-based configuration file but it's really not that hard and I'll show you more about the config file here in a second you can have also several different tabs so say you wanted a work dashboard and you wanted a home dashboard you could do that up here you can see I only have home configured but along this whole bar you could have as many different pages as you wanted so you could have different sources of information depending on location or whatever you wanted to do and that makes it so that you can kind of customize it even more and you don't have to have just a, a long scrolling list of widgets you can also change the themes obviously right here I'll, i just wanted to show that real quick before i forgot so let's take a look at how you install this thing so basically what you need is you have to have you have to have docker and docker compose installed and then you need to use a docker compose file just like this so Basically, all this is doing is it's setting a couple of volumes and it's setting the port for this particular application. So these are the volumes that you'll need to create somewhere and then you'll need to make sure you put the appropriate path to that volume. So you'll need to create config and assets. You'll also need to add this one here if you're going to be connected to any of your Docker containers. So if you want your Docker daemon to report back to glance on the status of your docker containers you'll need this if you don't use that or don't want to you can delete that and then you'll need the ports now i'm going to do a whole video on how to mess around with ports on your computer eventually i want to talk about how you kind of deal with this but what you want to do is if you are using other applications inside of docker you want to make sure that the second number stays the same the first number you can play around with pretty much however you want between a certain range and you can just kind of make sure that you have a very unique port on that first number for this particular docker container then you'll be fine so that's the docker container once you're done with that what you'll want to do as long as you have again docker installed and set up properly and, and docker the docker daemon running you'll need to do docker compose up dash d and it will then run that particular docker compose file and then you can go to the URL, which you will use your IP address 
your internal IP address, I should say, not your public one, and then the port number that you used in that Docker Compose file. Then you'll have the default glance dashboard. Now it won't look exactly like this because there's not like a bookmark section. There's, I believe it starts with Hacker News up here at the top or something like that. So you'll, you'll have to do your configuring and the way you do your configuring is inside of your configuration file. So if we go into the configuration directory here, there's two different files here. So we're going to vim into home first. So this is going to be where you put all of your widgets. So each one of those things I told you about is a widget. And the way it's done is inside of a YAML file. So you're going to want to be very cautious of spaces here. So everything's about two spaces apart. So this is two spaces. This is another two spaces. This is another two spaces. If you have an error when you're with your YAML, you're not going to be able to build this thing properly. So you want to make sure you pay attention to your spaces. It's done with, with columns. So if we actually take a look at the homepage, this is a column, this is a column, this is a column. And it allows you to choose a selection of columns. So it has small size columns, it has full size columns. So if we go down here, the middle size here is a full size column. You can actually see this. I was actually pointing it to that. You guys can actually see me point. So you tell the config file what size column you want and then what widgets are inside of the column. So you can group things together. So for so back to our thing here, this is a group. So this is how you how I group that. So you can you just tell glance that this is a group and then that group contains these widgets. So we I have bookmarks, I have hacker news, I have lobsters, and I have the docker containers. That's all part of the same group. I have another group down here for the Reddit one. So if I go back to the thing down here at Reddit, I have several different subreddits as part of that group. I have technology, self-hosted, Linux, Unix, born. You get the idea. So you can create groups within each column so you can kind of expand the amount of information that you can present on your dashboard. Now, each of these things is set up with a certain set of parameters and the best way to find that out is to go to their documentation so if we go back here to the website we can actually go to their list of configuration options and widgets so there's a whole widget section here that you can kind of see we'll actually go back to this right now you can see that they have rss videos hacker news lobsters reddit search groups but columns so so on and so forth I and mean, there's like probably what two dozen or stuff there you can set a clock you can do bookmarks repository server stats all that stuff and if you click on one of these, so let's say, for example, the Reddit one, it gives you all of the things you need to know in order to actually put this on there. So if you want to do the technology subreddit, you just type in Reddit subreddit. Again, making sure that you keep in mind that your spaces need to be correct inside the YAML file. If you wanted to do a weather widget like I've done, you go here, it, it you tell it what type of widget it is, the units it has. All of the widgets usually have certain options that you can add to them be below the type that allow you to configure that said widget so it gives you the hour format the, the location all that stuff and then it turns out like this like we so saw here on my dashboard so you can have a wide selection of widgets you can order them however you want so if you want to have two column two small columns and one full column if you wanted to have a medium sized column and a full size column if you wanted to have three small columns you could do that i do believe there's a certain limit to the amount of columns that you can have in terms of combinations so you can only have like two smalls and one full you can only have like maybe one medium one full things like that so you want to make sure that you follow the direction when it comes to the columns which you can see that documentation here under pages and columns you can see that it offers you a lot of flexibility on how your do dashboard is set up in terms of layout and width and all that stuff there's a whole bunch of different things you can put here in terms of size and title and all that stuff you can basically create this however you want now most of mine actually is still fairly stock this is basically what you'll see when you first start because I, I really like this layout i liked the small columns on both sides i like the full size one i even left the reddit stuff i just put my own reddit subreddits in there i added the calendar i added the weather i changed the markets here so it reflected some of the things that i need to keep track of i added the server stats but i kept the basic layout the same but you can do basically whatever you want with this thing all you have to do is go into that configuration file and refer to the documentation on what you can add now 
Another thing we should talk about that I haven't actually done, which is surprising, is theming. So you can, using CSS, make your own themes. There's also a whole bunch of, of pre-configured themes, I believe. So if we go to back up here to the top and look at available themes, we can actually see that it does have several available themes that you can download. So there's things like Teal City, Cat Poochin, several different variations of that. You can do this camouflage one, which actually looks pretty cool. There's Grubbox, which you'd think I would be using. I haven't actually done that, but I should. Uh, you can see Kanagawa here, uh, Toucan, which again is pretty cool. There's just a whole bunch of different ones. Dracula, a, a light theme that nobody should use, Peachy, and so on and so forth. There's, there's several of them here that you can use. You can also go into this file here called glance.yaml and set a custom CSS file so you can basically create your own theme if the color scheme that you want isn't available. So you can do that as well. If you decide to do your custom CSS, you'd put that in the assets directory and that has to be included in your Docker container. So you wanna make sure that that volume is there. So that's basically what Glance is. It's a dashboard that you can then set inside of your browser to always go to when you set a new tab or you open up a new page or whatever and it just brings you here and gives you information that you find useful. You can put basically anything that you want here even if it's not included in their widgets you can find ways of importing information that isn't included in the set widgets list. So you could scrape URLs, you can do all sorts of stuff if you have the skills to do so. Basically you can put whatever you want here and that's what makes Glance so good. I have used other dashboards in the past and some of them do configuration a little bit better. Some of them have more widgets. So there's one called Homepage that has way more widgets than this and also has better integration with things like Docker and other Docker containers. But it's so overwhelming. It was overwhelming for me. I just didn't use all of its features and I didn't like having to go through and just find which different widgets need an API key, then manage all the API keys and do all that stuff. It, well, it was very powerful. It wasn't necessarily what I was looking for. I wanted something a little bit more simple, had a lot of widgets, but was very simple to configure to configuration to configure. So overall, Glance has been very good for me. I, I really like the layout that I'm at right now. I'm going to delve into the themes. It's weird that I haven't done that. I, I knew that they were there and just haven't done it. I just kind of enjoy the one that was default. So overall, that is Glance. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon. That link will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. There you'll find a weekly exclusive podcast that I pu publish for all my supporters. Basically, it's just me sitting down in front of this microphone for 15 minutes or so just rambling about random things. So sometimes it's Linux related, sometimes it's not, it really depends. So you can head on over there, support me there, or you can head over to the store, which is available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find this awesome nerd hat, which you absolutely must have if you wanna be a Linux nerd, uh, at least so I'm told. And you can find that along with t-shirts and hats and stickers and all sorts of stuff. Again, shop.thelinuxcast.org. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very very much for your support i truly do appreciate it and uh, i hope everybody who watches this uh, enjoyed it and found it useful and i'll see you next time by the way the links for all this stuff will be in the video description so if you want to check it out go check it out thanks for watching i'll see you next time